So, I've been looking at Skull Lord Vargol for quite some time. I just haven't really gotten around to building him or trying him out, but I wanted to go ahead and do that today. I feel like today's a good day for it. I'm going to show my builds, my breakdowns, and just so you guys know, I'm looking at him in the context of Hydra. And I've asked some people their opinions on Vargol or if anybody has used Vargol. A lot of people say that he can be used in Hydra, but his thing is that his or let me let me let me back up for a minute let's talk about his skills so we have a little bit more context this a1 is a two hitter fills his own turn meter by five percent um per hit also has a 30 percent chance to repeat the skill his damage is based on defense heal reduction doesn't help his a3 is an aoe decreased attack it helps it's on a three turn cooldown and his main selling point is going to be his a2 it's on a two turn cooldown when booked places strengthen on himself which is in my opinion better than increased defense with a 100 percent chance to place provoke assuming you have the accuracy for it so his main selling point is his provoke which you put that on the head of cleansing it prevents the head from using its abilities to cleanse anything now if you can make him go fast enough you can keep that up pretty much all the time enough for you to at least get that head of cleansing down or out of the way or you know place your block buffs or or not your block buffs but whatever it is that you need to do right so his passive does destroy max hp not by a lot and not by not by anything that i would consider to be useful in something like hydra however some people have pointed out that he can solo like the scarab king or his provoke is really good against the magma dragon so he's got some doom tower uses I don't really see him being used in arena or you know pretty much anywhere else i'm sure he's got some capabilities but at this point where we are in 2024 moving into 2025 now i'd be hard pressed to find um anybody who doesn't have better options already and his passive his second passive revives skull sworn which is a a rare champion that uh, i don't think anybody really used like i've seen people try to make this happen in arena but it just hasn't really happened so with that in mind, I wanted to, you know, pedal back and, and talk about um, what other people were saying about him and that he's uh, basically like a B, C tier champion. And I think with new champions constantly getting introduced, he's probably just getting constantly power crept further and further down the totem pole. So, uh, you know, maybe he's not even a B, maybe he's more like a C. Maybe I was being way too generous. Let's see what the people say here. Yeah, no, he's definitely like a C. Faction War is cool demon lord you don't want to use him hydra is probably his best bet and faction wars but in in the event that you probably pulled him i, I kind of wanted to bring this out a little bit a little bit of a showcase slash uh, champion guide if you will uh, moving into 2025 here we'll see if he's still viable i'm gonna go up against the normal hydra and we're going to uh see what he does the other thing that people said is that he's not manual friendly right He's not manual friendly because this is not an AoE. This is only going to be placed on a target enemy. So you have to manual the run. And if you're like me, who doesn't like to manual his runs, you're not going to want to use this champion. I'm still going to try him out. I'll do, I'll do a little bit of manualing, but you know, keep that context in mind. However, if you're somebody who likes to manual or you don't have a reliable provoke champion, then this might be a, a good choice for you. At least early on, if you're trying to, you know, learn the mechanics of Hydra, if you're in the learning curve, then yeah, I suggest possibly trying him out. But just keep in mind, you're probably not going to use him again after this, unless you use him for the Doom Tower bosses. This is how I have him built up. You don't have to have him built any specific way. I kind of just threw him in the optimizer, put the priority stats in. We'll talk about that in a minute. And these are the pieces of gear that came out. We've got Righteous, Speed Boost, Resistance Boost, and Pinpoint to help me get the speed threshold that I needed. This is my third account, by the way. So my gear isn't all there. I don't really play this account too much other than doing Hydra every week, Siege whenever it shows up every two weeks, and then um, Clan Boss almost daily. But yeah, I don't really um, play on this account that much. So oh, let me show you the specific pieces of gear. My priority stats were making sure that he was going fast enough. And for me, because he's a support champion in my eyes, I was looking more towards making him go at least the minimum of 240 
and that's kind of my minimum speed for support champions. I'm also looking at survivability stats. So you're gonna see the HP rolls, the defense rolls. You saw a triple roll somewhere back here. Uh, never mind, you did not. Uh, defense over here, speed. You want some accuracy to place the provoke. We've got more survivability stats. Attack is not gonna help him. So basically just that. Now, I want to place glyphs here, but as you can see, I do not have any speed glyphs. We are all out, love that. Now, in Hydra, let me shift this over to Hydra, not that I do live arena enough to matter, his total stats are gonna be 105,000 HP, 3,300 defense, not exactly the ideal situation. I'd like him to have more, but it is what it is. 260 speed, pretty good, not the best. Obviously, if you wanna go faster, you, you should go faster because there's nothing wrong with going faster. You wanna keep that provoke up even longer. So, you know, maybe drop the HP a little bit, pump more into defense, maybe even more into speed. Uh, his damage, it doesn't really matter because we're not gonna be using him for damage. He's gonna be purely control. Now, for normal, this is overkill. You don't need to have it this high. Resistance and, and accuracy is good. I think something something else that you could do because um, this is approaching 500, which is nightmare viable, I think. I think for nightmare, you need like 450, 475. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure it's 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 over that. We're, 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 we're looking good. Now, when it comes to, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, when it comes to Skull Lord, initially, what I, one thing that I was thinking was that maybe you could build him as a mischief tank. But then again, I, I, I'm looking again, and I'm like, where where did you get that idea? He only places one buff on himself. You put a blood shield ring on him. That's only two buffs. I mean, maybe if you get the right team in, he could be a, a decent um, a decent mischief tank. But nah, I don't think so. So uh, let me collect these here real quick. Just get these. What kind of rewards are we getting here? We got some. Oh, what is this? Got an avatar. I like that. Got a frame. Got a frame, dude. That's nice. All right, so let's go into normal Hydra. Let me see if I can um, put a team together. Let's use this team. Who should we take out? Let's take out... Let's take out Varl. Let's take out Varl. Uh, we'll take out one of our damage dealers. Actually, no, we should take out one of our support champions because we have three support champions, three attack uh, damage champions. Wukong's kind of being um, in both here. Let's just take out cardio this time around and let's go ahead and put in vargal if we can find him where'd you go bro Var skull lord skull lord where are you dude there you are all right now because this is a manual run i'm not going to worry too much about um making sure that the presets are set but i guess you would want to focus on provoking first and then roll into the aoe decrease uh, attack which you know has its uses but let's go ahead and try this. Keep in mind, affinities do matter. So maybe sometimes you might go up against the roll. Hey, the head is not here. Okay, so because the head of cleansing is not here, I'm just gonna let it run on auto for now. And then when the head of cleansing pops up, then we'll go around. But this is basically the team here. Masha Ledge is going ham. We have um, Varl, Vargo. I'm, I'm mixing both of these guys up. Look at these guys. Oh well, yeah. I'm glad I'm doing this because I've been meaning to do this for quite some time and that's pretty cool. That's almost like Mithrala's, Mithrala's uh, animation there. Um, like I said uh, lately, I, I haven't been feeling the motivation, but you know, uh, today I feel kind of good. I'm feeling good today. Uh, I have had coffee. I got a good night's rest and you know, that goes a long way. I think what I've been doing a lot is I've been eating a lot and for some reason, all that eating has made me feel extremely sluggish. I'm waiting for the head of cleansing to pop back up. I know they, they switch out uh, rotations every now and then, but we'll see. So Skull Lord Vargal is force affinity, meaning that if the head of cleansing is, I think, spirit affinity, the chance of placing that provoke isn't going to uh, work too well. I can't remember if it's a hit or a placement. There's a difference, because if it places, we don't really have to worry about it, but if it's a hit, then we do have to worry about it. So we're just waiting for these heads to pop out. But with um, without Cardiel here, my damage is significantly reduced. So 
Do I think it's worth it? On normal, probably not. Because on normal, you can pretty much just throw in a bunch of nukers and you're pretty much squared away. You, you don't have to worry about um, too much. In fact, I've seen a lot of people not even worry about dealing with the um, block buffs. Like they're just able to, to smash through the heads. Now, granted, that's not really the case anymore just because of the Hydra's getting a buff with Serpent's Will. I hate it. I hate these, these Serpent Will buffs because that means that we can't do any damage and it's ridiculous. Like what if all four heads come out? at different times like yeah if they come out at the same time they're not going to um all have the buff but still like if, if one head comes out one turn or like a, a step or two before another head comes out that means both of the heads that come out are going to have the um serpent's will buff which means that we're not doing anything this is really not the best rotation for me to try to do this um showcase for skull lord vargal i'm gonna skip ahead okay so the head of decay finally came up I had to restart because uh, everybody died, and uh, yep, that's that's just what that that happens. It, it's happening. Okay, so the head is about to do its second thing, where it puts up that life. Oh God, where it puts the life shield up. And, but but check this out. He's able to place provoke. Oh, 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 